So guys, uh, we, can, we can get started with the uh, next talk for the uh, day. So uh, this talk will be by uh, Yogeshwar uh, Sonawane. So uh, Yogeshwar is associated with the Center for uh, Development of Advanced Computing, or CDAC, uh, in India. Uh, his talk uh, will be on um, uh, the performance uh, ob uh, observed with uh, MVAPH2 over CDAC's uh, own uh, Trinetra uh, interconnect network. Uh, so let's uh, welcome uh, Yogeshwar. Yeah. Good afternoon, all. So before I begin, uh, I would like to thank Dr. Panda and the MUG organizing team for inviting me for the MUG 2024 conference. Thank you. So today I will be talking about the AMWA pitch over CDAX Trinitra network. So the outline of my talk is I will be first introducing the Trinitra HPC network, then I will be covering the software stack for Trinitra. Uh, I will be covering the features of it, how we are supporting the MWAPH, and in addition to the MPI applications, we are also supporting the non-MPI applications that I will talk about, and I will share few performance numbers. Then I will discuss the future work, and I will conclude. So CDAC is a premier R&D institute in India working in the HPC domain. So CDAC has been designing and deploying HPC systems for last 30 plus years. And along with the HPC system, there is a HPC network which is also designed in-house and deployed for one of the machine. So it's like the, so first generation of the HPC network, it was designed in 1998 and uh, the recent one are the Trinetra network. So Trinetra is available in two variants. Uh, so Trinetra A we call it as, and then next one is Trinetra B. So Trinetra A is like, uh, I'll just discuss the, uh, those two network variants. So Trinetra A is like a 100 Gbps network on the link side, and it supports six links. So we can see from the diagram, it's a, it, support six links. It's a PCI based add-on card. Uh, so the, it's a, the host side connectivity is PCI Gen 3 X8. And this card is having the FPGA to, to process the hardware. So hardware logic is uh, implemented in ultra scale series of FPGA. And the topology for this Trinetra A is Taurus. It can be either 2D or 3D topology. So this uh, we have uh, developed in 2021, and very recently the next variant of this Trinetra, that's we call it as a Trinetra B. Uh, this we developed in 20 this year only, like few months back. So Trinetra B on the link side, it's a 200 Gbps uh, network. It supports 10 links. Uh, we can see. So it's like there is a one QSFP, then four. These are proprietary SAMTEC cables and so such five ports and those are again stacked in two uh, layers. So total 10 ports are there. Uh, on the host side, it's a Gen 3 X16. Uh, it's again based on the FPG Ultra Scale Plus device. And the topology envisage for this network is some kind of hybrid. Uh, we can go for mesh or it can be a kind of dragonfly. So typically, these 10 links provides us the flexibility to use the links in a split manner. So the, from this diagram, you can see, let's say, a cluster can be divided into groups. So within a group, let's say out of 10, eight links are used for the maximum connectivity, and the remaining two links are used to connect across the groups. So that's what the plan is. So with this hardware feature, I will just talk about this software stack for Trinitra A and B. Uh, software stack interface remains same for both the variants because uh, the interfaces remain same. So this software stack has two parts. On the left side, uh, this is targeted to run MPI based HPC applications. Uh, so here MPI is run on a Trinitra library. 
and it supports the zero copy or kernel bypass mechanism. So data is exchanged directly from the hardware. So right side of the stack, it is mainly targeted to run some kind of socket based applications, non MPI based applications uh, from the enterprise or legacy uh, domain. So I will discuss the features of the stack. Uh, so I will start with the left side that is like the to run MPI applications. So the features are like we are supporting the standard transport layer processing, all features such as reliability, uh, then adaptive flow control using credit, uh, then, uh, then uh, okay. So to implement this transport layer processing, there are typically two approaches. Uh, many of you may be aware, like there is one offload approach where the hardware is intelligent and doing the transport layer processing, and the other approach is the onload. So the software is handling the transport layer functionalities. So in Trenetra, we are using a hybrid approach so where software and hardware both work together to achieve the transport layer functionality. So if I give an example like a MPI layer, it is giving a message. Uh, so that it will that message will be given to a library, Trenetra library. Then library will further packetize that message and one packet will be given to the hardware for the transfer, for send. Then hardware will further split that one single packet into small chunks, we call it as a fragments. So hardware is doing the fragmentation and software is doing the packetization. So together it's like kind of hybrid approach uh, for the transport layer processing. Uh, on a Taurus network, uh, we can expect the packets out of order. So again, out of order packet handling is supported. Uh, typically, uh, these uh, Renetra network supports two kinds of mechanisms for data transfer. So there is a for small length messages, there is a SFQ that is like a single fragment queue mechanism. And for medium and large messages, there is a eager mechanism. Uh, can you describe those two mechanisms like uh, um, how does SFQ works and how does eager work and what is the message size uh, um, uh, like up to which you use SFQ? Yes. Okay. So uh, SFQ is like, okay, so SFQ mechanism, we use a PIO to, because it's a small link messages. So CPU will directly give the data uh, using PIO mechanism uh, to the hardware. Uh, on the receive side, it's actually a, a uh, not the RDMA. So it's again a DMA to a pre-allocated buffer. And in eager, uh, some kind of information about the buffer is conveyed, a minimal information is conveyed using PIO to the hardware. So hardware will do a DMA on the send side and get the data and send it over the to the receive side. And again, it will do a receive side DMA to a pre-allocated buffer. So uh, typically here, the point is like that on the receive side, there is a DMA, not the RDMA. So that's a uh, point to note. So again, the, there is a latency optimized path uh, for the small link messages and the standard features required by MPI like tag matching is uh, supported. So you have tag matching in hardware? Uh, it's in the software. Oh, software, yeah. okay. So um, uh, since you don't have RDMA and only DMA on the receive side, you will have to pre-post uh, larger yes, buffers, yes. is that right? Yeah, and on the receive side, there is one copy involved uh, from the intermediate sure. to the application. Sure, buffer. thanks. Okay, so then I will just discuss about how we are supporting MPI. Uh, for that, we prefer MWAP page, uh, the reason being uh, we have been discussing this for yesterday and today. Mwapich comes with different variants like Mwapich Plus, X, GDR uh, for additional features. So if you support one variant, the other variant can be supported faster. So that's the advantage we get with Mwapich. Again, we have been using, uh, there is a long association with the Mwapich team. We have been using Mwapich since 2005 and uh, it's an excellent interaction as well as help from the team. And uh, MWAPH is like, it's not in the MWAPH uh, the way she is developing, but in addition to that, there is a INAM as well as OMB. We have been using OMB, the other developments. And INAM is also one of the interesting uh, uh, development for us. We are exploring if we can support the INAM for Trinitra. Like in the morning, uh, Dr. Panda mentioned, like INAM can be used to correlate the network data with MPI data. So uh, this is again one of the wish list uh, from our side. 
Okay, moving on. Uh, so we are supporting. Okay, so we are supporting MWAP uh, three, the latest version using OFI implementation. So we have, and uh, this MWAP page three, uh, over Trenetra is validated with standard benchmarks such as OMB, IMB implementation, then NAS parallel benchmarks, as well as HPL. We also run a couple of HPC applications uh, from different application domains, like uh, I will talk about these application performance numbers in further slides. So till now we discuss about the software stack features for the MPI applications. In addition to that, we are on, let's say on the right side, uh, we are also have some part uh, in the software supporting the socket applications, and that we achieve using IP over IB or Trinetra. So we have ported, uh, supported this IP over IB component of uh, from the OFED or uh, mainstream Linux over Trinetra, and we get the socket. We can run the socket applications or Trinetra. Um, so we have validated this uh, implementation using the standard socket uh, benchmarks such as iperf, netperf, uh, even trying the Luster or any NFS file system or that IP or IB interface. So uh, with this, I will just talk about few performance numbers. Uh, yes, before. A quick yeah. question. So uh, your network is uh, regular ethernet, right? Yeah, so it is on the link side, it is having the ethernet interface but the protocol implementation is completely uh, proprietary. Okay, yeah. thanks. So uh, in order for us to do like network monitoring or network management, um, like SNMP or those kind of uh, protocols or let's say some of the newer protocols uh, in that regard, that, that would suffice, is that right? Yes. Okay, yeah. thanks. <clears throat> so uh, I will just talk about the, what test bed and environment we are having. So there are two test beds. Uh, one is the Trinetra A test bed. Uh, it is a 24 node cluster and it is based on the Rudra server. I uh, will just take a minute to describe the Rudra server. A uh, Rudra server is also a CDAX indigenously developed uh, server platform based on the Intel uh, Neon City reference. Uh, it's a half width uh, dense platform and it is Open 19 compliant and it comes in the 1U as well as 2U form, height form factor. So uh, here uh, it's like 24 nodes are connected in two cross, two cross six connectivity. And the standard, all other uh, software components are available. The next is a Trinetra B test bed. It's a 12 node uh, super micro based uh, test cluster. And here the Trinetra B, that's a 200 Gbps network is connected in four cross three fashion. So, uh, I will just present the micro benchmarks. Okay, so Trinetra is the latency. Here the latency is uh, 1.9 microseconds. Uh, that's the, uh, that's what we get. Uh, here is like, we are using FPGA. So we have to, whatever is the vendor is offering the standard PCI course as well as the server disk course, we have to uh, work with them. So again, there are some, uh, those may not be the best optimal perf performance uh, tune. But if we, let's say, go for the ASIC, we can, uh, overcome those constraints. So these numbers may have been, will be again uh, better if you go to the ASIC. For the bandwidth, okay, so this is a bandwidth. We get maximum around 4550 megabytes per second. Uh, so again, the reason here is like uh, on the host side, even if the link is 100G, the host side is PCI Gen3 exit. So it's, li it's limiting it to the uh, 64 giga transactions. Again, it's uh, the FPGA limitation. Uh, out of that, we are able to extract this performance. Uh, here, uh, we just, uh, you had that question, like the switch over point from the two protocol, like SFQ to Eager. So we, here, the, we, have, uh, we can see it's a 16K is the switch over uh, message size. So once we go to the Eager part, the bandwidth is increasing. Have you tried playing around? So looking at yeah, the performance yeah. trends, like probably 1K or 2K may be a better yes, point. Yes. So or that's a good point. I, in the next slide, I'm going to just cover uh, okay. that point. But okay, so we actually did one experimentation, like we uh, played around a couple of uh, packet sizes for the switch over points. So it's like uh, we tried with 4K, 8K, and 16K. Uh, for 16K, we could get the maximum bandwidth. Uh, for, for 4K, it was like a smooth rise here. 
but again the maximum bandwidth was not achieved again we are we want to investigate this uh, uh, but okay the point here is like uh, this can be customized uh, and this can be this threshold point can be uh, changed so if you know uh, let's say any application characteristics or uh, what we are go, we are, what we are like planning to run so that accordingly this threshold or the switch over point can be controlled so this uh, where the performance micro bench, uh, micro benchmark performance on the trinetra a for trinetra b uh, so this is like a comparison between a and b uh, so mainly a and b the resources are doubling so it's like trinetra is 100g uh, b is 200g again the pci side uh, a is x8 and the b is x16 so we are similarly seeing the bandwidth doubling uh, here uh, so these were like the micro benchmark performance uh, from MPI side. Uh, again, the other component is like that IP or IB over Trinetra. Uh, so we have run these IPERF and NETPERF and we are able to get these kind of bandwidth numbers, uh, 3000 and uh, close to 3000. And these are like standards, mostly available uh, numbers uh, on, the, on the website, the reference. So moving on, I will just discuss couple of application performance numbers. Uh, Again, here uh, we have run the LAMS, uh, that's a molecular dynamics uh, uh, domain application. So we have used MWAPH to run uh, this application and really the exercise is like, we have kept the problem size constant and increased the number of nodes to see the scalability. So uh, the, on the X axis we have number of nodes and on the Y axis we have the time to take, time to complete the application run. And as we see, increase the number of nodes, we are seeing the time is gradually uh, reducing. So it's a good linear scalab scalable uh, observation. Uh, similarly, ex similar exercise is conducted for another application uh, that's open foam, uh, that's from the CFD, that is computational fluid dynamics domain. And here also we are seeing a good scale up uh, when we migrate from two, four, eight, and 16 number of nodes. Uh, next, I will be discussing about uh, one application that's, uh, that's uh, this, uh, this is from the seismic processing domain, SysAcomo 2D, and it's actually our in-house application developed. Uh, here we have run uh, this application on Trinetra A test bed, and it is also equi equipped with uh, uh, Mellanox HDR100. So we have run the same set of uh, uh, data set on these both the networks, and number of nodes are varied and we can see the performance is equal, nearly equal. So uh, now I will just briefly discuss what this is like what we have done till, uh, till now. I will just discuss what is the planned activities. Uh, so in future work, so we have test bed till 24 nodes. We are by this year end we are planning to have 128 node uh, test bed uh, on a Trinetra B network using Trinetra B. So again, uh, uh, like just to recap, Trinetra B is a 10 links. So here the plan is 128 nodes can be formed using a 32 node like group, such four groups. And uh, out of 10 links, let's say eight links will be used for the within group connectivity, like that 32 node connectivity. And remaining two links will be used for across group connectivity. So that's what the plan is. We are expecting this by their, uh, this year end, this uh, cluster uh, will be available. Again, the next uh, planned activities like we have tried the HPC based applications till now on the Trinetra network, but we would like to explore the other domains such as AI based MLDL applications. And again, uh, uh, we are hoping and we are trying to make uh, these MPI variants uh, to be like running on the Trinetra network to support this MLDL applications. Uh, we can see like uh, when we say Trinetra, so it's a complete in-house development. We have fine control over the software as well as hardware components. So we can fine tune uh, those parameters if you know the application characteristics. So this exercise will help to get the optimal performance for the applications. So SIDAC has been collaborating with uh, national labs in India, as well as, well as uh, different academic institutes. And we are working with application developer teams uh, to get best performance on our test bed. 
and I discussed like another wish list is like if you can support I am or Trinitra. Uh, so that is yeah. Yes. So that we will discuss maybe and uh, we'll see how it can be. Uh, we can do it. Yes. Yes. So uh, with this, I would like to summarize. Like we we started with the uh, introduction to Trinitra hardware, Trinitra network hardware. Then we discuss about the software features. Uh, there are like two kinds of applications which are supported. One is MPI and the non-MPI like socket-based applications. Uh, Trinitra is an indigenous development. A feature is software stack is there. And for MPI, MWAPH we are using as a primary MPI. But other MPIs are also supported because it is um, Trinitra is supporting OFI. And uh, we are excited uh, to do some experimentation around this Trinitra B network uh, with 10 links. So it will give us flexibility of trying some topologies. Uh, so we are excited to work with that. So with this, uh, I thank you all for the patient listening. I can take a couple of questions. So is is ASIC in the roadmap? Then I, uh, you mentioned it for you know, so replacing the FPGA with an ASIC solution. Is that is that in the roadmap? Yeah. So that is uh, uh, actually I was like here presenting the network part. So CDAC is also working on a uh, in-house development of a uh, processor, and along with that, like it's, it will be SOC. The network will be part of it. So that's uh, one of the activities which is planned. What's the time? What's the time scale for that? Yeah, so it will be roughly um, two years. Yeah, I'm able to hear. Yeah, so that's actually a good point. Like uh, uh, for this, our latest variant that Trinitra B, the adaptive routing is supported on that. Actually, we are yet to do some experimentation around it. Uh, for the previous generation Trinitra A, that adaptive routing is actually not, that feature is not supported there. So we could not do some experimentation around, around it. But that's again an interesting and one of the to-do list for us. Yes, Ben. Uh, so a quick thing is, um, not sure if this is within the realm of the work of the, of the uh, for Trinetra, but is there any um, are there any are there, are there any plans for say something analogous to Nvidia Sharp like in network compute functionality? So I, I think the question is uh, Mellanox has a or Nvidia Mellanox has a feature called Sharp for network offload. Do you have any uh, plans yeah. for something like that? Yeah. Okay. So so uh, we'll it's like uh, again our hardware is based on the FPGA. So again there are limitations. Yeah. So uh, currently, we are not planning for a hardware-based offload. Yes. Sure, thanks. Um, uh, if there are any questions, may I request that you uh, follow up with uh, Yogeshwar uh, offline? Let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.